What's up friends, it's your girl T, aka the Nappy Headed Jojoba, and today I wanted to talk about some products that I love, but that I don't feel like get enough love from all the rest of y'all here on YouTube. These are just some products that I feel are underrated and just don't really get talked about for one reason or another. So here are 10 that I picked out. This is a bit of a companion piece to me going through a bunch of products that YouTube made me buy and that I thought totally sucked. While it is fun to go in on things, I felt like today might be a nice time to have some more positivity. Hopefully I can maybe turn you on to some products that I love that no one really talks about that much. Let's get it. I'm gonna start off with a hair product that I have already talked about before um, in a few videos, but most notably in my ride or die hair products. This is a desert island hair product staple for me, and that is the Hawaiian Silky Gel Activator. This is called a gel activator, but I just use it as a moisturizer slash leave-in whenever I'm styling my hair after a wash day, whenever I'm putting in my twist for the next week or however long or whatever it is. This just keeps my hair more moisturized than maybe anything else. I think my Kemet Biologics Burdock Root Butter Cream and this are the best two things for my hair in terms of actually like keeping it moisturized for a few days without me having to reapply or re spritz or anything. And I love this. I got this big tub of it from my local beauty supply store and it was only 15 bucks and it's still going strong. So it's really nice. It's a great value. It's easy for me to get it. I can get it locally. And I just feel like no one else really talks about it. So I just wanted to give it another shout out because I really do love this product. Next up is a primer. My skin type is oily, but because of the skincare routine that I've got set up, it tends to behave more normally now, particularly in the winter months. Nonetheless, I do have to be on camera for my job fairly often and I feel like my colleagues are just trying to punk me because no matter what I do it seems like they like me so that I look like a piece of fried chicken and that is why I have to make sure that I use as many mattifying products as possible on my skin if I know I'm going to be filming at work which brings me to the makeup forever step one equalizer mattifying primer most people tend to talk about the Becca mattifying primer tried it hated it this one I like. I don't really feel like people talk about this one as much. It's always Becca, 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 or even Milk of Magnesia. But I feel like this is a really, really good mattifying primer. It seems to work for me well enough. I might not be completely matte after eight hours or so, but it holds me down long enough to get through my shoots at work, and that's what I need it to do. I also find it a lot easier to spread, and it doesn't leave any weird film on my skin the way the Becca one did, so I definitely prefer this one. Next is another primer I like. I will often even mix a little bit of this one with the Makeup Forever one, and this is the Bioderma sebum pore refiner this one's more of a smoothing primer i really like to use it in these areas where my pores tend to be the largest where everyone's pores tend to be the lar largest let's be honest everyone's pores are usually pretty large on the sides of their nose this one's got a really silky lightweight but still feels like a water-based kind of texture not that silicone -y type which i prefer more water-based one the makeup forever one does feel more silicone -y. this one feels more water-based and i feel like it just does a really great job of smoothing my skin before i apply my foundation i don't think i've ever heard anyone else ever mentioned this but I know the Bioderma micellar water which I also use and love I mentioned it in my recent beauty favorites video my beauty favorites of 2016 but I don't really hear people talk about any products beyond that in the Bioderma range I've explored a few and this is one of my favorites the pore refiner so it's inexpensive because this is considered a pharmacy brand in France. It's basically drugstore. I get my Bioderma stuff either from Nigel Beauty Emporium in North Hollywood or just from Beautylish online. And the prices are reasonable. So if you're curious about Bioderma stuff, check it out because I feel like a lot of their stuff is really quite good. Moving right along, let's talk about the Estee Lauder Double Wear Light Stay in Place Makeup. This is a version of the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. It's just lighter. I had a sample of Double Wear that I tried. I didn't really care for it, but I really love the Double Wear Light. My shade is Intensity 5. Not only is the shade match pretty much dead on, it's one of the best uh, complexion matches of all the foundations I have, and I have many. This is one of my ride or die foundations just for days where I don't want to deal with color correcting, I just want my skin to look nice and I want no fuss whatsoever. It's not dewy, it's not matte, I would say it's a natural skin-like satin finish. And it's just so easy to use and user-friendly. I love traveling with this because I prefer the squeezy tube, I actually like squeezy tubes even more than pump foundations personally. And as you can see it's very slim, just really easy to throw into a makeup bag if I'm going out of town, so I love this one. Next up is more just a brand overall, and this is also a brand that I talked about in my 2016 Beauty Favorites video, and that is Drunk Elephant. 
I think Drunk Elephant might be something that gets talked about slightly here on YouTube. It might just be that their stuff is cost prohibitive because it's rather expensive and a lot of people just can't afford to try it. But I also think that perhaps they are slightly under the radar and I think that they certainly should not be because their products and formulations are really great. Everything is fragrance free airtight packaging, opaque packaging so that, you know, any uh, ingredients that are light sensitive will be protected and won't get destroyed as you're using them. And overall, just really worth trying. This is the vitamin C day serum that I have here and the glycolic uh, acid night serum, which is an AHA. I feel like these products in particular have really helped my skin to get past a progress plateau in terms of evening my overall skin complexion and getting my texture issues a little bit more smoothed out. So I feel like it's helped me to get past a hump in progress there and I'm hoping that the progress continues to kind of get me to the next level. Next is a brow product. This is from the Ulta store brand and this is their brow tint in the shade deep that I have here. I think there are three shades or maybe two, I'm not entirely sure. And I feel like I've heard hardly anyone ever mention this. I think Tara Babies mentioned this because I think she uses it in the blonde shade but I really like this. This is really great on days where I don't actually want to be bothered with like filling in my brows with a pencil or a powder. In fact, I haven't used powder in an age because it just takes a little bit longer. But if I don't even want to deal with pencil, I'm really doing no makeup, like maybe just some sunscreen and I want to have eyebrows just so that I have a little bit of structure to my face, I'll use this and I'll just kind of brush it through my brows. Now it's a little bit difficult to work with because it's a rather thin product. So it's easy to have too much on the brush and over apply. All I do is when I open it, I take the brush and I just kind of knock some off on the top and then I very lightly apply it through my brows and it's great. I feel like it really builds up the hairs that I have and even on the tail end, particularly on my right brow where it just fades away into nothingness. I'm able to kind of get some of this tint directly on my skin to create the illusion of a tail end of a brow in a pinch. This is a great one and done, done and dusted product on days where I just cannot be bothered to grab an, a brow pencil and do the whole rigmarole. Next up are highlighters and they are from Hourglass. This might be another situation where it's just because Hourglass is a luxury brand that it might become a bit cost prohibitive for people. Everyone talks about the same highlighters here on YouTube and there's various waves and ebbs and flows in terms of which ones are most popular at a given moment. But Hourglass has never had that given moment. I think perhaps these highlighters are too subtle for the likes of the average YouTube beauty personality, which I would not consider myself that at all. Probably why I like them. The two shades I have are Brilliant Strobe Light and Euphoric Strobe Light. As you can see, Euphoric has kind of a pinker tint to it and this one's more uh, yellowy golden. These are highlighters for people who just want a subtle, natural looking glow to their skin, not the shine bright like a diamond, see me from space kind of highlighter. That's just not for me. But I love these two. I talked about them in previous videos before and I think they're still great and just very much underloved. Catch them on a sale if you can because I think they are excellent. Palladio lip liners. I don't think I've ever heard anyone talk about these on YouTube, but I think that these are a really nice, inexpensive lip liner option. Lip liners are one of those things where for the most part, you know, nine times out of nine, I refuse to spend a lot of money on them. I just don't see the point in spending money on lip liners. I don't want to spend more than like $2 on a lip liner. And I love these because the Palladio brand has a lot of shades that are very close dupes for famous MAC lip liners. This Blackberry one, I think is very close to Night Moth. I can't say for sure because I've never had Night Moth, but I've seen the pictures online and it's close enough. This other shade I have here is Raisin. I got these from Ulta. You can probably get them other places as well, but I think these are a really great inexpensive option, especially if you're looking for dupes to Night Moth and some other famous MAC lip liner shades. Sticking with lips, I wanna shout out the Obsessive Compulsive Cosmetics Lip Tars. This is the original type of, well, not the original, I actually have some of the original packaging, but this is how they used to always come, which was in a tube with a little squeezy situation, and now they come in this ready-to-wear version where it's actually got a dope foot applicator so you can just apply it straight to your lips. To me, OCC are the OG liquid lipstick. Before everyone started making them, these are the real original liquid lipsticks. Now they don't really dry matte, but they last all day. They're ultra pigmented. Some shades aren't as great as others, but for the most part, I think that they've got a really great formula. They're a cruelty-free brand, which is always great because at this point, there's absolutely no reason for any brand to be testing on animals. And they've got so many shades. I mean, they have, I don't even know how many, but almost any color you could think of, including mixing colors like jet black and stark white, they have those. So you can lighten up other colors and darken them and mix them and match them and create custom shades. OCC is just one of those brands that has been around, honestly, 
obviously since before I even started watching YouTube and I just don't think they've ever gotten the love that I have for them here on YouTube. The last thing I want to talk about are the Daniel Sandler Watercolor Fluid Blushers. I think I've mentioned these before, maybe in some Get Ready With Me videos. They're liquid formulas, as you can see, and you just have to shake them up to redistribute the pigment if they've been sitting a little while. And these are awesome. I've had these for a couple years, and you can see how full they all are, and that's because you only need a drop, like literally one drop, because they're ultra pigmented. So what I'll do is I'll put one drop like on a palette or something, take my fingertip and tap it on my cheeks and then just blend it out with a beauty blender. Gorgeous, meshed into your skin kind of blush color. These are some of my favorite shades. I think I have maybe two or three others. I was always skeptical about orange blush. I know they always say, oh, women of color wear orange blush, it's beautiful on you and I kept trying them and didn't really like how any of them looked but this one is great this is trip I know it looks scary in the bottle don't be afraid it does look lovely on the cheeks this darker color is called dare and then this one flush is pink I think this is the first one I ever got and I I really love these blushes if I actually have the time like if I'm in a rush it is faster to just grab a powder blush and dust it on and be out the door but when I can actually take the time to do my makeup which is always ideal I will almost always reach for these rather than a powder blush. So there you go, 10 products that I love that I feel need to get more love here on YouTube. So I'm trying to start a movement. Let me know in the comments if there are any products you love that no one ever talks about in YouTube videos. And thanks for watching. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. That's a, that's a nappy headed hose there, I'm gonna tell you that now. <laughs>